problems from chapter 13. We are going to be doing 130105. Uh, we're going to be doing. We're, well, uh, we're ultimately going to do all three of these. But in this one, this video, we're going to focus on this top one. You know, the, there's a, a rod is used to move the smooth two pound particle around the horizontal path in the shape of a lamicon. So we have. They give us the position equation, so 2 plus cosine theta. Uh, if at all times theta dot is 5, uh, sorry, 0.5 radians per second, determine the force which the rod exerts on the particle at the instant theta equals 90 degrees. So theta equals 90 degrees which is also pi over 2. The force which the rod exerts on the particle, uh, the fork and the path contact the particle only on one side. Okay, 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 let's go. So, let's let's begin with how we always do these problems we're going to do the first couple time derivatives of r uh, we should get sine theta theta dot r double dot when we uh, crunch the numbers here we should get minus cosine theta theta dot squared minus sine theta theta double dot okay um, theta double dot is actually zero because they're telling us that it's constant angular velocity okay and then now that we have all this let's plug the numbers and evaluate um, let's evaluate all these equations so r at theta equals pi over 2 is just going to be 2 because cosine 90 is 0. What else? R dot is minus 0.5 and then R double dot is 0. Alright, cosine 90 is 0, theta double dot is 0, so this equation is 0. All right, so we have pretty much everything here to, uh, we have all the information necessary to get the um, radio acceleration and the angular acceleration here. Uh, let's see. Remember, this is, let's always write it down. It's trying to, you know, burn this into your brains, these two equations. R dot theta dot and then you should end up getting a let's see minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 unit wise uh, let's see this is going to be feet per second squared feet per second squared all right done with this part now we move on to let's let's start drawing let's draw the tangent line on the figure itself. I know it's kind of small, but let's just try to do that. Let's see what color. I think blue will be a good color. You know, the tangent. You know, it's probably something like that. Okay. Then I know that my radial axis. Just follow the r, the position vector, straight up. This is r, and then I know that theta is perpendicular to r. Okay. And a key word here is horizontal path. So that we're not going to take into account the weight of the particle. Okay. What we're going to be taking into account is the forces that... Um, you know, the, the ball is hitting the slot at w on one point 
and then the fourth rod is hitting the the particle on one point as well. So the way I drew these, uh, let's go with uh, red. The way I drew these forces was, well, I know the f the fork is pushing it in this direction, right, perpendicular to R. So I call this n theta. So this is the force, the normal on the f particle by the rod, which is what we're trying to look for. And then the slot, which is like the orange tubing part, the slot is exerting a force, a normal force, on the particle. And that's the one that's going to be perpendicular to the tangent line. Okay, so something like this. I'm kind of a bad drawer, as you can tell. So this is the normal, uh, let's call it by the slot. Okay. Now, this clearly is an undefined circular path for us. All right, so we're going to have to determine what psi, the angle psi is. For those physicists that are studying um, or have doing, maybe doing engineering physics, um, you'll soon encounter psi a lot when you do your short and your equations. But what we have to get is we have to determine this angle. Right, the angle between the tangent line and the radial position, which is given to us by r dr d theta. Okay. Um, in this case, we have two plus cosine ninety divided by sine ninety, which is minus two. Once it's all said and done, we get minus sixty-three. 0.43 degrees, okay, and that can be read as um, you know this is minus 63.43. So if you read it kind of clockwise to R, right? So that'll that'll be this over here, okay, and then you know that the angle between theta and the tangent line is just going to be the uh, it's going to be 90 minus i okay which is what do I have what do I have um, 26.6 26 26.6 that's what I have okay so those are my angles, that's all I need now. So now let's keep moving. So let's go back to let's try this color. Alright, so now we have our forces. Now we can break down. You know this is this is r so we have the angle between ns the normal by the slot on the particle and r which is just phi okay so the forces in the r direction okay we're gonna have minus ns cosine 26.6 okay Hopefully everyone's with me right, right, right up to here. If not, just pause it. Just try to do the geometry on your own. Okay, just slow it down. Prove to yourself that okay, these angles are what they what you know this random guy on YouTube is telling me what they are. Right, prove yourself that, and then once you're done with that, break down the normal components or sorry the normal force on the slot on the, by the part on the particle by the slot, break it down into its radio and its theta components. Okay, and there's what you should find. That it's the radio component of this normal force is NS cos times cosine 26.6. And that's the only force that's acting on this um, on the particle, right, along the radial direction. Because we're not taking into account 
the weight. Remember, it's horizontal path, so there's no weight here. Um, equals 2 over 32.2 times minus 0.5. Okay, when I crunch these numbers, I end up getting that this normal is 0 0.0347 pounds. All right. Now, why did I solve for that? I didn't need to. They're asking for n theta. Well, in order to get n theta, we're going to need to know this value. So let's do the equation of motion along the theta direction. Okay, so that's going to be n theta, right? Um, if cosine 26 was the radial component, then sine 26.6 is going to be the theta component. So it's going to be minus ns sine 26.6, okay, equals 2 over 32.2 times a theta, which is minus 0.5 as well. Okay, move everything to one side. Now we should end up getting a value of n theta is minus 0 0.0155 pounds. Okay, what does that tell us? Well, I'm assuming that the rod, because it's spinning counterclockwise, is pushing, you know, it's pushing the particle in, you know, towards this direction, right? Towards the left. However, what are these accelerations tell us? That the rod is slowing down, right? Because it's cosine, it's going to isolate between, you know, um, whether it's going towards the left or clockwise or counterclockwise, okay? So it's a, like it's an oscillatory, right? So technically, this n theta, since the rod's slowing down, the rod. If this is the rod itself, and because it's slowing down, it's pretty much pinned down on the left part of the fork. Okay, so m theta should be pointing towards the right. Okay, so it doesn't matter how you draw it, right? Try to try to get it right the first time, but if not, because I drew m theta going to the left, I'm proving that m theta is actually pointing to the right, the opposite direction. All right, because it's slowing down, so it's not, you know, it's it's not on, you know, it's not on this side as it spins this way. It's not on the right side of the fork. It's actually on the left side of the fork because it's slowing down. Okay, that's just you know a little uh, conceptual. Try to visualize what's happening. All right, but yeah, this is pretty much all we need, okay? Thanks so much for your time, guys. I'm going to get on to problem 1306 in the next video, and then after that, we'll do 1307, and those will be the last problems for now for this chapter, um, and I'll move on to chapter 14. All right, guys, thanks so much for your time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your questions, comments down below. It's always appreciated when people leave good feedback, you know, I remember one time someone left uh, the backgrounds too dark and uh, immediately I switched it to white and then ever since then people have liked that better. Um, but yeah, so constructive criticism is always good. Um, any other feedbacks appreciated. Thanks so much for your time guys. See you in the next video.